Okay, I have a little small consideration you need to take, especially uh, when you're disconnecting and reconnecting uh, your system and your Servo GX is uh, powered from the same source. It's not a problem, but it's, a, it's an area where you need to keep in mind, especially when you first fire up your system and uh, because the Servo GX is still booting up, the MultiPlus, when it kicks in, it will, it will run your, your you know, 100 amps or more charging your battery, which is not a problem if, you, if your battery can handle that. But in many cases, that may be something you don't want to do. So what you need to consider and I will zoom in a little bit closer to this unit right here. This is the, let me closer, Servo GX. Right now I have this running off the distributor, which means when I disconnect my batteries, that shuts off. And if I turn on my batteries, the MultiPlus can give it maximum charge, which you probably don't want. Once the Servo GX uh, fires up and gets properly connected, which takes about 30 seconds or so, then whatever charge rate that you set, like in my case was 15 amps, it, it dropped right down to 15 amps. So it's something to take into consideration. I've been toying with the idea of giving this a dedicated 12 amp lithium battery. I have one, I have two or three in that range and power up directly from that. Or don't connect the battery until your servo GX fires up. So it sh you should turn it off. If you have a small battery and you throw 100 amps on it, I don't know. <laughs> it might cost, it might not like it. So it's it's uh, it's a it's not a, a bug, but it's uh, a sequence that you need to be aware of. Your Servo GX should be up and running before you put your system online, or the Servo GX needs to be powered on but a backup battery or, or, or a source, which is, I don't know, it defeats the purpose to do that. It just con uh, adds uh, more complications. So keep that in mind when you're doing that. And I did uh, do a quick test. Again, I just used a, a 15 uh, amp uh, cable and I plugged in my, I think that's a 500 watt heater just to be sure it's working. So I'm I'm happy with this. It, it's working nice. So it, this will get completed when I install this on the RV. Okay. I was kind of thinking. Yeah, I just wondering if Victron could do a firmware update on their MultiPlus that it first tries to communicate with a Servo GX to see if it's up and running and perhaps give it the option to increase the delay as to when this thing will cut in and start charging. It's kind of, um, I guess you could call it a little bit dumb <laughs> not having that capability. Victron is well known for its communication and everything being integrated. Integrated. It only makes sense they do the same with this firmware. It should be talking, checking what it has online first before it starts by default. It's uh, something I'm wondering if it uh, could be looked at. Anyways, 
Let's um, answer a question from one person. As you probably are aware, you do see radios. I'm a ham radio operator. Uh, those are VHF, UHF uh, radios. And what's in the corner is uh, 33 amp uh, DC power supply. I don't have the HF uh, hooked up. I sold it a while back and I'm thinking of getting another one. I'm looking at the ICOM 705. Uh, no rush for it, but uh, we, we've been a ham, I guess, since the 70s. So we have our advanced uh, ticket. We used to do all sorts of uh, different modes, CW, slow scan TV, satellite, all that stuff. Then EME even once, that's Earth, Moon, Earth, because I had a very high powered uh, USB, um, not USB, but two meter SSB uh, transceivers, VHF and UHF. So I'll probably one day create a, vi a video just uh, on this subject. But until then, take care.